Hello and welcome to an FPGA Vision video. In the previous videos of this lecture, I showed you how to implement a neural network on an FPGA. And in this video, we will make several small but interesting advancements. So the first thing that we start with is to detect more colors. In the previous video, we only had detected the yellow color, um, but as we saw, um, the tr um, road signs in Germany have different colors. So what we do now is we detect also a second color. We detect yellow and blue. And you can extend this to more colors um, if you see the principle. What we need then is uh, first again test images. And um, we have uh, the test image with a yellow sign. We have another test image uh, with a blue road sign. We could use uh, several test images, but it's more convenient to combine them into one image. So we take two regions uh, from the two test images and have this combined image. And we also need labels for the regions we want to detect. And we use three different colors. We have a region with the value 0, 127 and 255. And in our implementation, you need exactly these labels. And here's the octave code for training the network. It's called NN RGB three categories. And it's uh, similar to the version you saw in an earlier video. So let's look at the differences. We have three output colors. Then here we reading our um, images, combination snapshot one and the label combination label one. You were setting up the variables. And now we read the training data. So for um, color one, we have the value 255. It has to be exactly that value. And the color two is exactly the value 127. Um, you can also make a range of that. Um, this is a modification that might be interesting because it's a bit more tolerant to different colors. Um, then we're checking how many categories, um, how many pixels we have in the two categories. Here we define the network structure. And this is another change we have. We now use a larger network. So the network structure we have is uh, three input uh, layers, three input nodes, um, seven nodes in the hidden layer and two output uh, neurons because we have uh, the two colors, color one, color two, yellow and blue. Then we start training. This is very similar to the code we had earlier. And then we save our result in this file. Then we can go into Octave and do training. Here we see again the statistics. So 11% of category one, 16% of category two. This means reading of the labels has worked fine. Training takes a bit, depending on the computing power of your computer. And then you see the matrix for the hidden layer and the output layer. These are quite a number of values. In the last video, we copied these values into our VHDL code. And now we want to do something a bit advanced. We want to use a generator to generate the VHDL code. We invoke the script and n generate VHDL uh, calculates fixed point integer values and writes them into a VHDL uh, configuration file. This is the VHDL file that is generated by our script. We have the name of it, it is a config. Here we have uh, the connections and here you see a definition which connection corresponds to which function. So connection two down to zero is the input of the neural network. These are our values red, green, blue. And connection 11 and 10 are the output. These are the values for detecting the yellow and the blue color. And then you have several arrays and structures to code the structure of the neural network and the parameters. So the, we have uh, three input nodes, seven hidden nodes, and two output nodes. And um, they begin at zero, then at th position three, um, the hidden layer begins. At position 
it goes into position 10 and um, until position 12 we have the output. And here you have in a list um, the different parameters for uh, the neurons. This is a mapping of the uh, neurons, so the different neurons correspond to these positions of the array. Um, and here we also have uh, calculated the uh, range of our values. In the old version we used just 32-bit, but this is too much, so this new version also checks the range that our integer signals can take, so that only an appropriate word width is generated. Now we look at the VHDL file. So this is the top level. We are reading the configuration file. The start of the file is similar to the one we had earlier. And now we have here a generate statement for the neurons. And to understand that, we have a look at the old version. So this is the old version of the um, VHDL file of our network. We have uh, a neuron. And here we have the generic parameters with the values from the training, clock signal, inputs, red, green, blue, and the output. And basically this is the same that we have now here um, in this more advanced version. We have a generate statement and um, here we generate the different neurons. We have a generic map and here are the positions, the values from the configuration file. We have a clock input and then we have an array for the input signals um, that is defined in the configuration. We use an array here because we now have different number of inputs. In the old version every neuron had exactly three inputs, but here depending on the number of uh, nodes you have, you can have more or less inputs to your, uh, to your neuron. This is the output. And this also means of course that we need another neuron definition. This is given here. So um, again we're using the configuration file and um, here we now have um, the generic port, um, clock, input and output. And then with another um, generate statement we are um, using um, the multi doing the multiplication of the weight with the input value and we give this to the accumulation value and then here uh, also with a loop, we are adding the accumulation values to uh, the sum. The sum then goes into the activation function. And here we use um, our IP for the activation. We are using here only 12-bit because um, we don't want to use so much memory. Memory on the FPGA is limited, so we're using a um, smaller number of uh, input values uh, to our ROM. Let's go back to our top level. So here we have the neuron um, in this general statement. Then we have uh, the delay of the control signal. This is exactly the same as we had earlier. And then we have here the connection um, to, the, to this array. So red goes to connection 0, green goes to connection 1, and blue goes to connection 2. Also, the output processing is a bit more advanced in this version. We want to have a better, better visibility of the results of our neural network. And uh, therefore, we overlay the image with the colors. We do this by first converting all the pixels to gray. So we have the red, green, blue values. And from this, you can calculate the luminance with uh, this uh, fixed point um, calculation, which derives uh, from the floating point definition. And then we distinguish three cases. If we don't have a color detected, we just give the gray output value. If our neural networks detected something blue, um, then we mix 50% of the gray image plus 50% of blue. And if we detected a yellow region, then we mix 50% gray with 50% red and green. And this red and green combination is yellow. So, Let's look at VHDL again. We calculate the luminance and we delay it for several pixels according to the pipeline stages of the neural network. Then we have output processing. Luminance is uh, this value here. And then we calculate a yellow output pixel. 
which is uh, luminance divided by two. So shifted by one pixel is um, this uh, factor of 50%. And then we add 128, we add this value one for red and green. So red and green gives yellow. For blue, we also take luminance value by 50% by shifting it. And then we add 128 at uh, the blue component. And if we have a gray image, uh, we just use luminance here. So um, this is just the original pixel without any additional color. And then we have an if statement and we check if uh, the output of uh, this, this node is larger than 127, which means uh, we have detected this color. And this is the output of the yellow neuron. We also check um, if yellow is larger than the second output, this is blue. So if yellow is larger than 127, we have detected it, and it is larger than blue, then the output pixel is yellow. In the other case, we have um, an output value larger than 127, and blue has more weight, um, then the output pixel is a blue pixel. Also, if only blue is larger than 127, we only also have a blue output pixel. And in the other case, none of the output of the neurons is larger than 127. We have not detected one of the colors, then the result is gray. So um, this is the statement for the three cases we have. Output can be yellow, blue, or gray. And then we give this result to the output. Now we can do synthesis. Here you have all the files that are required. Don't forget to include the pin assignment. And uh, we accelerate a bit and get the output of synthesis. In our remote lab, you can check the implementation. You upload the binary. We choose a test image, which is a different image than we used earlier. And after a short time, this is now real time, you see the result of the implementation. We can enlarge this and we see the result is as we expected. The road signs have been detected, so all this looks good. Here on the right side, you see that the tail light of this car is also detected, so there still is room for improvement. Please remember, the input to our remote lab is a 720p video with 1280 by 720 pixel and 60 hertz frame rate, given always the same picture. And this means we have 55 million pixels per second. And the FPGA provides a very high computing power. It has the neural network and we have seven nodes with three inputs in the hidden layer and two output nodes with seven inputs. So this makes 35 multiplications and additions nine sigmoid functions plus the output processing. You find all the design files on our website. There's a link to GitHub. And I invite you to make your own experiments. Watching the videos is nice, but uh, you learn more if you really work with the code. So, thanks for watching.